Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Welcome to episode 12 of Building My Garage. So today I'm going to be doing a final checklist of the last minute things that I'm looking for before pouring concrete. Ideally this is a couple days before pouring concrete, but I'll walk through more detail at the end of this video. So let's get started. So one of the last things I did on my PEX tubing here to get it ready for concrete is I put a 2x4 on the back, just screwed it down into that 2x4, and I got it just raised up there. Just used some good heavy duty Gorilla tape on there, taped it on there really good, so I think it'll hold. That stuff is good and strong, put lots of wraps on there. I didn't really want to wire tie it, I just don't like using wire on tubing like that. That's what I did and it seems to work good. I'm just going to keep it up out of the way for the concrete, that's my main concern. And even the board that I did down there, I think I talked about it when I set that up, but I made sure that that is up out of the way of the concrete. So right here, just to show you the back side, which doesn't look pretty, but I made sure if you look down here and go underneath there to the other side, there's about two inches of clearance under that board. So I wanted to make sure to give them as much room as I could to put their trowels and stuff around there to get the concrete worked under there. So that's kind of my plan there. So the only thing really that I have left on that part is I'm going to spray foam in the conduits there, which I'll show you that when I do it. I want to make sure to foam in there so no concrete or gravel can get in there to chafe on the tubing over its lifespan. So that's my biggest concern with that. So I'm going to fill that in any of the other cracks and stuff that I have around here. As I had told you earlier that I like to run this PEX inside the one inch conduit 90s because it protects it when it's going up through the concrete floor. The reason for doing one inch is the half inch PEX goes through here easier, but I actually had to do a couple in three quarter when I added that last run because everybody was out of stock of the one inch, so I had to go three quarter. So it does fit, but I do recommend going with a one inch when you can just because you get a lot more room to run it through there. So the other thing is I like to fill this with great stuff in the conduit here because if you're pouring this and you get some gravel or concrete inside here, then it'll chafe during the life of the PEX tubing. It'll chafe in there and maybe, you know, make a hole eventually or, you know, it's just not good anyway. So even if you get a little extra, you can trim it in the morning if you want. If you do this the night before the pour, it really won't hurt to have this in here. Up here, you can trim it later if you're worried about looks. This stuff, of course, does expand a little bit because it's made for up to one inch. But I like this great stuff. There's other brands you can use too, but they're just the most commonly known one. Kind of like Tyvek for house wrap. Everybody knows the name Tyvek, even if they don't use Tyvek brand. All that to say is, yeah, you can easily get too much in there, but I like to just go ahead and fill them up. Make sure you get a little too much rather than not enough. And if I do have a little extra, I'll probably trim it off in the morning. I filled the water line, and that, of course, got way too much. But I also wanted to fill around any of these pipes. I filled around here, which I don't think it's really going to matter. I don't think concrete's going to seep under there, but I thought I'll seal it off just in case. This is where I left that box open for the shower, so I'm going to pull that out anyway. But yeah, any kind of pipes, penetrations like this, I like to seal it off. That's why when you're cutting this stuff, you don't have to be exact if you're going to do this, because that takes care of any discrepancies. The one thing that the concrete guy wanted me to do before they show up and pour is mark out where the garage doors are going to be. So first I made a mark there, but I also made it out here so it's easy to see in case it gets a little concrete spillage on it. They can see the line because right here by the door they're going to taper it down a little bit. That way it's easy to approach into the building. So I marked this one. I marked it right at 10 feet as you can see. Then I marked one over here and I marked the one back in that corner since there's going to be one back in that corner. So today is the big day. Concrete is finally showing up. So I wanted to go through checklists really quick of the things that I went through to think about before you pour. Now you want to think about this before it's the last minute, of course, but I did it already last night, went through everything, but I wanted to just go over everything this morning with you guys since it's clear and the footage will be better. So the one thing, I don't know what code is where you are, but what I did here is I wanted to wire tie my rebar every other. I skipped one made sure that every other one was done. Now some of them are going to be closer together because I did all the laps where they come together, you know, whichever way they're running. So I went through the whole thing one way, like this way, and then down this way, and made sure that every other one was tied. So hopefully when they go to pull this together, they're going to pull it up with a rake and stuff as they're pouring, but that's going to pull up nicely like that. Anyway, so that was the first thing I went through. Second thing, if you have anything that you want to measure, make sure to measure that and document that. Like here, since I'm going to put a car lift maybe in the future down the road, I'm going to at least prepare for it. So I wanted to document this off of a reference point with pictures. So what I did is I measured off the outside and I went off the foam, which I know that by pictures, so I can compensate for that difference when I go to measure from the inside of the wall. 
and I measured off back there where the radiant heat comes up because I know that's a reference point. So I know I did off the back wall by that and I know I did it off of the closest wall this way. So whatever you got to do to document something, make sure to do it now. Now's your chance. Then in my case, I wanted to foam around all the penetrations like the drains, drain pipes, like the floor drains, things like that. And then I wanted to foam around these, which I had showed you these. So that's another thing. Make sure that that's all done if you're going to do that. So yeah, make sure everything's tied off. Mark your garage doors if there are some, if they require that for the openings. So that's something as well. And of course, you have been maintaining pressure over the last couple of days. And like I said, it gets down to about 72, 73 during the night when it cools off. And it gets back up to 75 when it's hot, like where I put it in at. So I expect a little bit of fluctuation just because it's right in the sun. And then during the pour here, the guy that designed my system last time, he recommended to drop it down to 30 PSI during the pour. So once you've maintained that 75 for a couple of days or so, at least 24, 48 hours, I would recommend 48 hours minimum, but then drop it down to 30. I'm probably going to shoot for like 35 or 40, something that's easy to remember. Probably the reason for lowering it is if you do have a blowout for some reason, it doesn't just blow concrete everywhere like crazy because there's a lot of pressure at 75, lots of air volume with this amount of PEX. That's just kind of a reference point, so I got to drop that down yet, but I got everything marked out. The one last thing I want to show you that I did is I went through and marked where all the stakes are, especially on the side here where they could potentially drive down. This is a little tight up here where the bank is, so he said they might shoot everything from that side. So my spot isn't as accessible as some of them, but what I wanted to do is go through and mark where all the stakes are, make a big mark so that the truck can see when he's backing in. He can see right where my stakes are. So I use some good marking paint, high-vis marking paint. So you can see they go back and forth a little based on where the braces are, but I wanted to mark those all out. I did the front here as well, just the stakes. I didn't make extra marks because they're just backing in straight to here. So that's the front. And then on this side, I marked this one out as well so that they can see this really well with their mirror. This is a little bit narrow as well. It's not super wide, but I do know that the conveyor truck guy came in here and he had lots of room. So he made it okay. So concrete truck can make it. So the concrete guy, the guy that's in charge of pouring it, he said that there's plenty of room here. He came out and did a site evaluation and said he can pour it all from this side if he has to. So they're going to just see what the trucker's comfortable with. I know the concrete guys are used to working around all kinds of stuff, but I thought if I put a little paint on it, maybe they'll trip on them less as well. All right, well, that's just some things to think about. Your checklist might be a little different than mine, but that's some things that I wanted to go over mentally before the concrete guy shows up a ways before. Make sure that everything is good and ready to go. All right, guys, we'll keep an eye out for the next episode. It is going to be pouring the concrete floor. Finally, there's so much prep to get to this stage, but it's finally here. I did hire someone else to do it because it is very labor intensive for just one or two guys. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.